everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Matthew Robbins, and today I will be interviewing Dr. Ed McCauley, who is the President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Calgary. Thank you for joining us today. Dr. McCauley, the CSPC is extremely thankful for your participation in this interview today. Thank you, Matthew. Looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, so am I. So to begin, one of Canada's long-term challenges is our underinvestment in fundamental science. Canada's overall R&D intensity is one of the lowest in the OECD. So what are some ways that Canada can start to reverse this trend? It's really interesting. If you take and combine the data on GDP and investment in R&D from the OECD database, there's actually a very strong positive relationship between investment in R&D and gross domestic product. Rising GDP means the economy is growing and resources available to people in the country, such as goods and services and profits, are increasing. So increasing R&D expenditures in general and it increases GDP, and that's a good thing for countries' economies. The government of Canada has made significant investments in tri-councils over the last five years, specifically for fundamental research. They've increased the number of graduate research scholarships, um, expanded the Canada Research Chairs Program, among other very, very important measures. So this investment through the tri-councils, et cetera, in R&D means that Canada should start to see an increase in GDP, which is good for the country in terms of growing our economy. But it's really important, those investments were timely. It's really important for the government of Canada to think about how they can, can uh, renew these commitments by, for example, um, delivering on the, on the commitment to fund 1,000 new Canada research chairs and increasing the support for early career researchers in Canada because we want to get those careers off to a very, very good start. Those are extremely interesting points. I especially uh, like the point about the increased grad scholarships. I know I had a bunch of friends who were extremely stressed about uh, the lack of grad scholarships. So I'm glad that it's moving towards uh, that direction. So uh, thanks for sharing them. And to follow up on that point, how have the first, how have the past few years demonstrated the importance of long-term investments in fundamental research. I think many people have observed and made the comment that science in essence saved the world in the last two years. Uh, we mounted a global effort to produce vaccines, for example, to confront the COVID-19 pandemic. Those vaccines were produced in a very, very short time period. And there were specific advances that had to be made over that short term period in order to manufacture them and produce them quite quickly. But the availability and the access to those vaccines were based on years and years and years of research into basic fundamental biology, molecular biology, immune responses, and so on. And that fundamental research contributed to our ability to deliver to the, to the crisis and to respond in a very, very short time scale. So that investment in fundamental research paid off. It also, investment in fundamental research also invests in partnerships among in investigators, both in Canada, as well as beyond. And those partnerships are very, very valuable at a time of crisis because we mobilize knowledge across the globe in science very, very quickly. And that's because of our investment a long-term investment in fundamental research. Thanks for sharing that. It sounds like it's all about acting now to prepare for the future since you never know when you might need this one random piece of knowledge that was found 20 years ago to solve one of the problems today. Now, let's focus on the tri-agencies. The tri-agencies play a critical role in supporting fundamental science in Canada. This summer, we saw grassroots calls for more investments in Canada's research talent. How is Canada doing in terms of developing and retaining world-class research talent? This is a really, really important question because it deals with making sure that Canada can, can sustain the talent development for the future. And that's what's so very, very important. I think that we have made inroads in terms of trying to support early career scholars in launching their careers, but also developing a very, very strong talent pool with both undergraduate and graduate students 
in the country. And that talent pool is extremely important. In 2018, the government made investments in the tri-councils uh, to move some of these, to invest in some of these areas, but those investments are coming to an end. And while they did increase the number of, of scholarships, the nominal value of those scholarships have not really changed for a long period of time. And so I think it's important that we consider the support for early career researchers in 2022. And as well, we need to make sure that Canada is in a very, very good competitive position to attract talent, not only in our own country, but from around the world. Other countries are investing significantly in science, engineering, as well as social science research. For example, in the, you've seen recently in the US, the Chips and Science Act represents over a $200 billion US investment in support of fundamental science. And Canada will benefit from that because that fundamental science will produce knowledge, which will be shared around the world. But if we wanna partner with other uh, countries, and especially in the areas of fundamental research, they will do so when they see the tremendous talent that we have in Canada. And we need to make sure that that talent is there and it's growing and has the ability to actually collaborate. So building that talent pool is really, really important in Canada because countries will want to partner with us. But also we have to provide the resources for those individuals to pursue their excellence in their particular discipline. Yeah, those are extremely interesting points. It sounds like science ultimately is a human driven pursuit and ultimately researchers need to have the resources in order to follow not just their passion, but also solve critical problems facing Canada today. Let's follow up on the relationship between scientific research and the economy. Now, some Canadians may not immediately see the connection between funding scientific research and economic growth. Can you speak to the role of research and development investment in growing our economy and improving Canada's quality of life? Yeah, thanks, Matthew. And this is something um, that the communication is, I think, is really near and dear to my heart. Um, the empirical relationships that I talked to you about earlier actually exist. So there's an, actually an empirical relationship between investment in R&D in a country and its GDP, and it's a positive relationship. So the more you invest in R&D, the, the, the more the GDP grows. And as I mentioned earlier, GDP is important because that means the economy is growing. It's a metric of how the economy is growing, what resources are available to people in terms of goods and services, as well as wages and profits. So there is a direct relationship, which is kind of interesting. The causality is a little bit more, is a harder to, to explain. I mean, just think about the fact that the more talented people you have that you're supporting through R&D, the more ideas they're creating. The more they're turning these challenges in the world into opportunities and it, creating the knowledge and actually transmitting and that knowledge to the benefit of society. So that's one sort of obvious linkage. But I think what's really, really important when we look at this issue for Canada is to think about the future and think about how fundamental research in particular areas might really enable all sorts of different industrial sectors to take a big step ahead and the example I'll use is in is advancing quantum science and artificial intelligence. The more we invest in our understanding of quantum science, in terms of quantum computing, secure communication, sensors, and so on, advances in that area underpin many different sectors. They underpin finance, transportation logistics, energy production, agriculture, as well as advances in health. So by investing, for example, in fundamental research in quantum science, that the results of that will feed into a variety of industries to move things forward for Canada. And if you look at some of the, the overall studies that have been done, people see employment, people see advances in quantum science being extremely important for the growth of economies five, 10, 20 years out. And Canada needs to invest in, that, in those areas, as, that's just an example of how R&D translates into improvements in a variety of different industrial sectors, not just one. Yes, what you mentioned regarding quantum science reminds me of a paper that I 
read during my PhD that showed that by making some advancements in quantum science, it would have not just radical benefits to fundamental research, but also civil engineering, navigation, things that we take for granted today that will be transformed within 10, 20, 30 years. And coming back to your earlier point, other countries are investing significantly in these areas. And it's really important for Canada to identify what areas it wants to invest in and focus in those areas so we can partner uh, yeah. on the world stage. Yeah, we want to partner and also help drive the narrative, make substantial contributions and Canada, for Canada to then become like a world-class center for quantum research and quantum technologies. And I understand that the University also has a major, uh, has recently invested in quantum science, I think this past summer. Yes, yes, we have a vision for activating Calgary as quantum city. Um, once again, about not only developing the talent for today, but thinking about how we can develop those applications, which really may have an impact in terms of transforming industry. Think of secure communication over the internet. Um, you know, there may be ways in which we can use quantum science to improve that. Well, uh, coming from a background in quantum science, I know I'm extremely excited about it. And I hope all of our viewers are also super excited for what the future is going to hold for quantum science and other investments in fundamental research. So thanks for providing your perspective on this. I think this really helps clarify how research and development is related to Canada's economic growth. So we're extremely grateful for your engagement with the CSPC. So we have one final question for you. What do you suppose is the biggest benefit and value of attending and supporting the CSPC conference? Canada is a very, very big country, right? We have a variety of regions from across the country. And I think the CSPC conference enables minds from across the country to come together to actually think about how we could move science policy forward. And everybody will have different perspectives from the different jurisdictions they're in, the different provinces, the different territories, different regions. And I think the ability to gather those people together to discuss those ideas in a strategic way builds our capacity for policy development in the country in the area of science, which is very, very important, I think, for the future of Canada. Yeah, thanks for your thoughts on that. And thanks again. Dr. McCauley for participating in this interview. I know that our viewers have come away with a much better understanding of the connection between research and development, fundamental science and Canada's economic growth. And I hope we'll see representatives from the University of Calgary at the upcoming CSPC conference. And I hope many of our viewers will be able to attend the conference and see firsthand it the communication between scientists, academics, industry, and government. So thank you again for participating in this interview today. Great. Thank you, Matthew, for asking me. I really appreciate it.